The Chaser's War on Everything is rated M for a mature audience. It contains coarse language, sexual references and adult themes. Before we begin tonight, we need to clear up a few things. Yes, just uh, one or two things. Uh, we just wanted to say that it's absolutely untrue that Kevin Rudd wanted tonight's show brought forward by one hour. Mm -hmm. That is not true. Very different story, though, on Sunrise, where he asked for the dawn service to be held an hour early, and he didn't stop there. Tomorrow night, Kerry O'Brien's interviewing Rudd on the 6.30 report. And then uh, this Sunday night, Channel 9 are profiling him on 60 Minutes earlier. Yes. So uh, please make those changes now to your TV guides. But uh, let's get into the show and... Uh, did everyone here have a good Easter? Yeah. I thought uh, I thought the Easter message, thank you, was uh, a bit lost this year, Chris. Mm. I thought the message was lost because 2,000 years ago, you know, Easter was all about wanting to crucify a Jew. Mm. But this year, <laughs> everyone seemed hell bent on getting rid of a Muslim. Uh, very, very confusing. I love the Mufti. I love the Mufti. Ever since Tamir Dockett left Australia, I think the Mufti's taken over the role of Australia's number one bearded nutcase. Yeah, and, uh, yes. But uh, keeping the Easter theme going, mm. uh, now in our very occasional segment... <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> what have we learnt from history? And, yes, it is a, it's a special religious edition as we take a look at the Holy Book of Genesis. In particular, the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now, numerous faiths, Christians, Muslims, Jews, they all accept this story as historically true. And they pinpoint the fall of man to the moment when Adam and Eve ate the fruit that was offered to them by a serpent. It was the original sin that mm. we've all been paying for ever since. Quite a big deal, really. But have we learnt from our mistake? Would anyone of a religious faith be so foolish as to accept some fruit from a serpent today? <laughs> like an apple, madam. Best tree in the garden. There you go. Would you like an apple? Yes, get, you get one for your husband. That's what Eve did. Come on, from the best tree in the garden. Yeah. Okay, central. Good on you. Hey, you want an apple? Why not? Uh, how much are you charging for the apple? Free. Free. What are you advertising? Nothing. Some George Bank or something? What is no, it? it's nothing. They say there's no free lunches. I don't know. It's not a lunch. It's only. An well, apple. look, it may affect the rest of time, but other than that, it's a free apple. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. You must be advertising something. Can't okay. a guy be a serpent at giving out apples and not being expected of doing something wrong? That's good. Thanks, man. Have two? Yeah, you go for your life. Have two. Which one do you want? Excuse me. Hey, no, come on. Complimentary apple. No, go. Okay, go. Good. Don't do this. Complimentary apple for the archbishop? Go. Get him out of here, please. Sir. No one's the Easter eggs with an apple. Oh, thank you. There you go. From the best tree in the garden. Celebrate. Prime Minister, would you like an apple? Come on, take an apple from the serpent. Oh, is it? Oh, actually. Come on, from a serpent to a snake, Prime Minister. Take the apple. You can trust me. It's in the best tree in the garden. Catch this, Prime Minister. Catch. Soon, our exclusive coverage of the sporting event of the century, the 2007 Global Warming Games. The world's most polluted nations battle it out in a world of rising sea levels. Catch the 100 metre sprint. Men's singles tennis. And the elegance of the equestrian. 
Further inland see full drought kayaking. And coming later this winter, all the speed and thrills of the downhill slalom. <laughs> the Global Warming Games, where the action's always hotting up. Andrew, I know you watch a lot of current affairs, but one thing I was wondering, do, do you follow American politics? Well, not as much as our government does. Well, no. that's probably sensible. But, you know, one thing I'm fascinated to see is, is who's going to be the presidential candidate for the Democrats this year. I mean, it's a very strong field. Oh, it sure is. I mean, look, first there's the Illinois Senator, Barack Obama. He's very popular. Does have the slight problem that even CNN mistakes him for the most dangerous terrorist mm, in the world. No problem, yeah. <laughs> then there's the North Carolina Senator, John Edwards. Now, his problem is that he gets confused with that dodgy TV psychic from crossing over. He's actually He's actually polling OK, but mostly with dead people. Yes. <laughs> Finally, of course, Hillary Clinton. Uh, her problem is that no one could possibly mistake her for anyone else, which is why 44% of voters hate her. Mm. <laughs> Even so, Hillary has actually raised the most money of all the candidates so far. 26 million in the first three months of this year. Most of which came from Bill Clinton's kissing booth. <laughs> if Hillary wins, he'll make a great first ladies man. Yeah, but it does seem like Bill gets all the action and we reckon that is unfair. So we sent Charles Firth along to a Clinton campaign event to offer Hillary some extra special support. Now, I've got my CV here because I want to be Hillary Clinton's intern. Do you think that would appeal to her? Very flattering photograph. Yeah? Very That's good. Yeah. This is intern material for the Clintons. See, I've got a great dry cleaner who can get any stain out <laughs> so that we won't have the problems like they had with the other Clinton presidency. Yeah, yeah I think you need a trim. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. How did you get into the Oval Office to do this? That's a gross position, I'll give yeah. that. I've got my CV here for Hillary. Can, can I get you to pass it on to her? Um, it's just... Step, step away. Leave her alone. Get no, away no, no, from me! No, it's fine. I, I just want, I was just wondering whether you would be able to pass it on. Hillary? Hillary? I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you, Hillary. If you could just see my portfolio, I'm, I'm sure you would want me as your intern. I'm sure you would be convinced. I'd really like to not have sexual relations with you in the Oval Office. Thank you. Thank Hillary you Clinton, Charles Firth from The Chase, I'd like to apply to be your intern. Oh. I, I, know you've, I know you've had a bit of trouble with them in the past, but, I, but I, I think if you saw my portfolio, oh, I, can, I can bring my own cigar. Hillary, I, I can bring my own cigar um, if you... I'll give it to her, thanks. Th thank you very much. Th th thank you. That's great. Just pass on. Tell her I've got a bigger one if um, if need be. Hello, I'm Jay. And I'm the Doctor. And welcome to JTV or a Jcast. We're doing another J intro to another J band. And here's a great J clip. Oh, loving that J handheld camera, Doctor. Actually, can we get him a J tripod? Because it's bloody annoying. Anyway, so this band has gone massive. So massive, Doctor. Massive. More massive than the last band we said went massive. massive. So here it is on JTV, Wolf Mother. Massive. <laughs> story going around about Keith Richards snorting his father's ashes, which is uh, it's a uh, great mental image, apart from anything else. Well, it's a new party drug, isn't it? I imagine the Logies, all the celebrities will be in a toilet snorting up ashes. Oh, they will be a uh, little bindi there chopping up her dad. But... Although, although, apparently, Craig,
Yes. If, yeah. <laughs> bit too soon. If you want the really good shit, you need to import it from Colombian crematoriums, you do. apparently. Yeah. You do. But sadly, the, the Keith Richards story uh, wasn't true, as it turned out. But it did still get me thinking about ashes, because you often read stories, don't you, about how certain people want their ashes disposed of, like Hunter S. Thompson wanted his fired out of a cannon. Yeah, and I think one of those Star Trek actors apparently is getting his shot to space later on this month. That's right, even my own grandfather wanted his scattered at sea. And mm. in most cases, people always carry out the wishes of the deceased. But is there a line? Are there any places or locations where you're not allowed to scatter the ashes of your loved one? <laughs> I'm just, I'm scattering some ashes. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's just my mother. She said in her will she wanted to be scattered in this menswear shop. She wanted <laughs> her ashes to be scattered in a maxi cab. Oh, right. Um, With an ugly man, best man. Well, she didn't specify the looks of the driver. <laughs> what do you normally do when this sort of thing comes up? I never have that volume thing. My mum's the first person who's wanted to be scattered at Ron Bennett Menswear. I just want to scatter some ashes in the seat you're in. My mother played the stock market every day of her life and she really wanted to be... Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Excuse me. She, I'm just, she's not step on my mother. Just, just hop over the ashes, thank you. It's her dying wish that she wanted to be scattered here at Crispy Cream. She was a very big consumer of your donuts. In fact, to be honest, it's probably what killed her. That's OK, it's just Mum. Sorry it's in the middle of the counters. If you just ask people to queue around either side of her, that'd be great. <laughs> sorry. What the fuck are you doing? Sorry, sorry. It's my mother. It's my mother. It was in bold print in the will. She was very specific about it. On the mat? Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Can I get a donut to go? Now, one of the most crucial parts of any current affairs report is blaming someone for an outrage. For instance, Chaz, you remember that race riot at the Australian Open? Yeah. Right. Who do you think was to blame for that? Uh, the race rioters? <laughs> No, you've got to blame more people than that. In fact, you should take a lesson from the master of blame, columnist Andrew Bolt. Who's to blame? Anyone who threw a punch is to blame. Anyone who yelled a racist insult is to blame. Primarily, they themselves are to blame, their parents are to blame, their community leaders are to blame, and Australian society is, to some extent, also to blame. <laughs> Well, damn you, everyone. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Now, what we saw there, Andrew, was a great list of menaces to society. And a current affair needs all the menaces it can get, because if we look at the current affairs tally board for 2007, they're trailing today, tonight, 34 menace to society stories of 24. Ah, but never fear a current affair are more than holding their own in the crucial mindless celebrity fluff category. 69 stories of 34. It's an average of one a day. Very impressive. But where the tension really builds is in the old people screwed over category. It's never Neck and neck at nine stories all there. So if you're an old person who's been banned from knitting, today, tonight, wants you now. On to today's lesson now. The one thing everyone involved with the current affairs show has in common, from the targets to the reporters to the viewers, is humiliation. Mm. Take, for instance, this man on The Current Affair. Now, his name's Harley. He's a bit overweight. And ACA wanted to find out how many kilos he was. For his own good, of course. Oh, yeah. Naturally. Yeah. So what's the most dignified way to do that on national television? With no scales big enough to check Harley's weight, we've brought him here to a horse stable for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably the most humiliating time of my life so far. What, being weighed on horse scales or appearing on a current affair? <laughs> Still, you know, why go to the trouble of humiliating someone when you can make them humiliate themselves? Take this guy, right? He went through this terrible ordeal. He had to wait hours in an emergency room in his underwear. Now, here's a current affair helping him get over his shame. I was dressed in a pair of boxer pants uh, and a singlet. That must have felt great. It was very embarrassing. I felt so uh, demoralising that, uh, uh, you know, people come through and they're looking at you. And now 1.4 million ACA viewers are also looking at you. And what better way, Andrew, to help a girl crippled by body image issues than to showcase her oversized breasts from as many camera angles as possible? Elise Flanagan would normally be too shy to show her 14G chest. More than anything, I hate the attention. 
Yes, well, here's some of that attention she hates. Uh, all the dignity of a camera <laughs> hovering inches away from her breasts at every conceivable angle. And she'd especially enjoy this 180-degree tracking shot, <laughs> reminiscent of The Matrix. And you're never too young to be humiliated, Andrew. Oh, no. Just look at the tactful way this little boy finds out for the first time that his father has rejected him. Jessica, have you thought about how hard it's going to be to tell Chad that his daddy doesn't love him and, and doesn't want him? Well, how do you tell any child that their father doesn't want anything to do with him? How do you tell him? You simply ask reporter Rowan Wen to do it for you. And if you'd like Rowan Wen to tell someone near and dear to you that their entire self-worth is based upon a lie, give him a call today. Uh, you know, all those poor people. I, I can't think of anything more humiliating than what they went through. Really? I can. I vote for the Democrats! I'm the treasurer of the Pussycat Dolls fan club! I enjoyed watching Norbert. I want to have sex with my own parents! What has you become? I don't have a son anymore. You say? Yeah, that is more humiliating. <laughs> so obviously, with current affairs reporters so good at spreading this misery, you have to avoid them at all costs. And we've got some helpful hints from the professionals themselves, dodgy guys. First up, this man. Now, he works on the logic that if he can't see the reporter, the reporter can't see him. And isn't that tactic working a trade? See, now, this guy really has the upper hand now. He has that reporter exactly where he wants him. He comes out of this whole encounter looking squeaky clean and with his dignity fully intact. <laughs> well, blue shirts, they're the perfect form of camouflage, aren't they? Oh, yeah, in the jungle, chameleons use them all the time. I want to take my hat off to this next guy. This is the first time in two years of watching Current Affairs that we've witnessed a man fight back. Reporter Chris Allen thinks he's got this sad old man trapped in a room. Oh, but Allen doesn't know what's about to hit him. What uh, gives you the right to be rude about people in the window, Mr Fraser? So, can you... Can you tell us why you think it's funny to uh, put these signs in the window, Mr Fraser? Whoa! Oh, take that, Chris Allen! Let's look at that again on the Channel 9 hotspot. Now, you can see where Chris Allen's forehead hits a sweet spot in the door, right there! Well done, you feisty old bugger. In fact, you deserve a prize. Excuse me, old man, we've brought you a precariously balanced cream cake. Now, whatever you do, don't make any sudden moves. I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. Oh, look at that, I thought that would have happened. He's on the bus and train, his phone calls are a pain. He's Clive, the slightly too loud commuter. <laughs> yeah, g'day, it's Clive. Mate, uh, I've got some uh, packages for you. I've got some, uh, it's about three kilos worth of ice. You know, not, not party ice, ice the drugs. I've also got the cocaine. No, ecstasy you want. Jeez. Hang on a sec. Sorry, mate, do you want... Can I just, I just hold those for a second? Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Yeah, hang on. It might be in the bottom pocket if it's anywhere. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Sorry, darling. He's quiet, the slightly too loud to do too. All right, let's get into it. The first problem to fix this week is Chaz's smell. Jeez, he really needs a bath, he doesn't does, he? Got particularly after that poo pashing sequence mm. earlier, doesn't it? <laughs> but you can't just take a bath willy nilly nowadays. Water's just too expensive. Unless you're a big corporation like Coca-Cola. Now, Coke gets its water on the cheap from a company who pays only $2.40 for a million litres, while normal people pay $1,000 for the same amount. Sounds a bit unfair to me. Mm, sounds like Coke should probably share some of that cheap water around. Mm. <laughs> G'day, thanks. G'day. We need another. Can we get some water, please? Yep. I really need a bath, guys. Can, can we get some water? water? You guys got the cheapest water. Can we get some water? He's very dirty. I'm, I'm a very Outside. dirty man. Can't he bath here? Let's go. Unbelievable. I'm hoping I've got $2.40. I'll take a million litres. Oh, come on. Can you at least give him a quick scrubbing? 
can't, it's just not the same without the oh water, guys. It still on. really is. It's disgusting having round. I'll take 100,000 like this. Oh, here we you go. We can make a profit. Can't believe it, hey? So can you get the discounts? I can't believe they treat us like that. It's ridiculous. Rubbish. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, next cab off the rank, Libby Lenzen. Now, she's copped a lot of flack for turning up to her wedding in a tent. Yes, yeah, so I know a lot of people have their weddings in marquees, but that was ridiculous. Mm. Now, look, apparently the tent was actually a cunning strategy to stop the paparazzi from taking photographs, but I still snuck a camera in regardless, and what a beautiful wedding mm. it was. Uh, here's the happy couple cutting the wedding cake. <laughs> there they are, doing the bridal waltz, lovely moment. And, of course, in the honeymoon suite later as well. <laughs> She is a real girl, that Libby Lenton. Talk about a fitness mm. freak. The next morning, back in the pool doing laps straight away. Really a <laughs> mark of a true champion. Very impressive. Now, our final problem this week, the Bra Boys. They're the uh, surf gang from Maroubra who star in a hit new documentary. Yes, what a lifestyle these guys lead. Uh, waves, tats and killings. It's no wonder Russell Crowe wants to be their mate. Yeah, look, they, they've even been accused of running drugs and one of their leaders, Kobe Aberton, he's the one with that wanky My Brother's Keeper tattoo, he got done for covering up when his brother killed someone. So all in all, they've, they've got something of an image problem, Jules. Any mm. solution? Well, the easiest way for a gang to lose its tough guy image, I reckon, is to let me join. You guys are the bra boys? I'm just up to the, to the bra boys. I've got, oh, I've got my bra. Can I, I've got my bra here. Can I go up to the bra boys? No? It's a perfect bra. Look, it's got even got a pouch. Hiding the gear. Look at that. It's good. Yeah, it's got a holster. There you go. Very discreet. No? OK, all right. OK. All right. We've got my tats. I'm my brother's alibi. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Come on, guys, I just want to be part of the gang. Obviously, membership's a bit stricter than I thought. No worries. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Cheers. All right. No, it's not. It's not. Okay. All right. No worries, mate. No worries. Whew. Might try and join the Bronte boys instead. I think they're a bit gentler. Don't think fixed? that's fixed, no, no, so. no. Remember, if you'd like something fixed or not fixed, email us at thefixes at abc.net.au. And we'll see you next week, unless the Brow Boys get to me first. <laughs>dip our toes in the commercial waters and uh, this week it's one of the more famous ads that's been kicking around lately a hugely successful campaign you might know as flash beer Take your What a beautiful story it is. A man with no brewing experience whatsoever is still able to get a job at Carlton United through the power of dance. It's inspirational stuff, especially for someone like me who's always dreamed of working in a brewery. Oh, I've been knocked back so many times in the past, oh, guys. Life can be oh. cruel, Chess. Yes, but not anymore, because now I know the secret of employment at Carlton. So they'll have to think twice before turning me away. Oh, I was looking for a job. I really like brewing. Well, sorry, can't help you. Okay. How about now? You're kidding. You're not going to give me a job. I wouldn't give you a job in a bathtub. This is unfair. Is it because of my dancing? I mean, in the actual lab, they gave you much more space. This is rubbish. Did you have to do the dance to get the job? Because I reckon I can out dance you anytime. Come on, let's have a dance off. You and me. After all this dancing I did for you, I almost cracked a rib. Just wow! Rubbish! Oh, Rubbish! Talk about double standards, kid. I reckon you're twice as good as the fat bloke on the air. Probably twice as fat, too. I tell you what, those guys wouldn't recognise talent if it was lying face down on the floor in front of them. Well, pains me to say this, but it seems once again the ad has failed the test. Oh, the hey, no, 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 I wasn't going to give up there. Just because the beer industry can't spot a modern-day Barishnikov when they see one doesn't mean that other people can't. I'm with you, Chessie. Yep. I agree, I agree. Maybe there are some other positions vacant out there just waiting 
for an applicant with some bad 80s moves. I want to get a job here. Can I work for you? Sorry. You can't do that? Hang on. Vaguely amused, that's all you've got at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vaguely amused, I'm vaguely employed. Yeah. <laughs> Best moves yet. Sorry, you're gonna have to do that elsewhere. It's good. Can you tell me I can't get a job? Absolutely. How about now? Where's the justice of that? <laughs> what kind of a world do we live in where a young self starter can't get a job with wearing leg warmers and a fat suit? That's wrong. Well, that is all we have time for, I'm afraid, tonight. But uh, if you've got a suggestion for an ad road test or just want to offer Chaz a job, Hit us on the war guest book at abc.net.au slash chaser. And remember, you can go grab a podcast of the show there as well. Thanks for watching. Catch you again next week, same time. Unless John Howard sends us to Afghanistan. Good, Good night. night. <laughs>